Good to see y'all. It's good to be in November, making our way to the end of the year. I'm excited about 2024 and finishing up this year with a bang, just moving through it. Good to see you. Great to be in the house of the Lord together and worship and just feel the presence of the Lord today. We've been doing this series on the same spirit, and uh, it's essentially a series about gifting. That's why we're doing the workshop on the 19th. And uh, finding your purpose, understanding a little more about who you are and how God built you and how to uh, walk out your life and uh, make decisions based upon how the Lord built you. So the same spirit. Uh, so it's about purpose, about gifting, how you're tooled, uh, what kind of trades God's given you, kind of like a spiritual download. I have a friend, uh, his uh, mom passed away and left a pretty uh, substantial little a chunk of uh, change and they built an orphanage in the Philippines and I see him he worked a very stressful job over the years and I watch him sometimes shoulder under the load of his work but whenever he's dealing with that orphanage it's like he becomes a different person it's like there's such joy and I've talked to him on the phone I'm like dude this is your gear isn't it you love this so much and I watched them this week take uh, another group of people he takes leaders down there or over there in the Philippines and uh, shows them around and everybody just enjoys the kids and and I watch how that aspect of his life gives joy and feeds back on him and I think there ought to be something for all of us in our daily living maybe it's not as grand as an orphanage but something in our life should feed back to us and make us feel like uh, like he does when he's working on that orphanage and I think there are those things for you. And gifts uh, inform purpose. Your gifts inform your purpose. We're grappling with this. Hey, I'm, I'm 60 years old, getting ready to be 61, and I'm still kind of finding my way through it, right? I don't guess we ever stop exactly looking for that perfect place that God has for us. So grappling with purpose and the gifts inform your purpose. You're gifted to do, have you ever heard this phrase, you're gifted to do what you love to do? Have you ever heard that? I think it's good, it's a good filter. You're gifted to do what you love to do. I'd add to that a few things like you're gifted to do what you have energy for. So, you guys are laughing for what you have energy not for, right? <laughs> I have energy for sleeping in this morning. Energy, what you have energy for, like you can work up, you know, nobody has to punch a clock for you or tell you how long you need to stay on it. You're just like kind of get, can get lost in it sometimes. So how do you know what you're gifted to do, what you love to do, what you find energy for, what you get good feedback so others see you in that realm and watch you work and your family at work, in your community, whatever it is you're doing, and you get good feedback from people. Thank you. And that really blessed me and that kind of thing. Leader affirmation is another strong one. People that are leaders in your life that go, man, you ought to do more about that. That's cool with you. And so leader affirmation. Uh, another one that's kind of interesting is what are you critical about? So you look as others are operating in life in an area that you are gifted in and you go, yeah, I'll do it that way. They ought to do it a little better. And you have some critique. You have some opinions about how it ought to be. That's your gift talking, right? It's a negative maybe, or it can be fueled as a positive, but first you have to see what's wrong in order to fix it and make it right. So really, uh, your gift can be talking when you critique. And if you do the wrong thing with it, you know, you, you get negative. But if you realize that that's your gift talking, then that means, hey, go participate. Go make it stronger or do it some way. Emotion is another uh, thing that informs uh, what your gifts are kind of... Uh, how you, you can get excited about something, you can cry about it. And then this last one, what drives you to help people? What drives you to help people? My friend's orphanage has like 120 some odd or so kids in it right now and I, and I watch uh, how all of the life that he's, and leadership that he's bringing and the people and the donors and how they've gathered around these kids and you watch the joyfulness and the happiness in the midst of a really tough situation it drove, his gifts drove him to bless somebody. Your gift can drive you to bless someone. 
Uh, Steve Dewberry is a, uh, one of the teachers that are a school teacher, a public school teacher that's a part of this congregation, and, and he works with handicapped, challenged children in the public education. And whenever you talk to him about that, he lights up and he starts talking about the families and the backgrounds and the tough situations that people are coming from. And, and he can get lost in the conversation because it's his gift talking. When you go through the New Testament, you see this word charisma, which uh, is a Greek word that's translated gift. And then you'll find gift lists in like Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, 1 Peter 4, different places there are lists of uh, using this word in association with a function, right? So these are like tools that are on your tool belt. And charisma is gift, a God-given uh, ability. And we're highlighting some of those each weekend. This weekend, I want to talk about the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. Notice that it's described as a message of or a word of. 1 Corinthians 12 says it this way. To one, there is given through the Spirit. Everybody say, through the Spirit. That's it's going to be a key function uh, word phrase today. To one is given through the Spirit <clears throat> a message of wisdom. King James Version uses the phrase, a word of wisdom. So it's not the gift of wisdom, like somebody walks around and they're just God's gift for wisdom. Uh, I guess that could be over time. But this is a word, an expression that comes from the Spirit. It's almost like outside of you. You couldn't have come up with this or the timing that's involved in it, but the Spirit used you to say something that was wise in a moment that was needed, and maybe you didn't even, uh, you didn't prepare for that. To another is given the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, and that's where we got this uh, title for the series, Same Spirit. So the Spirit, this is a Spirit thing, through the Spirit, a timely message of wisdom or a timely message of knowing something you couldn't have known. But we're reaching here for purpose. And that's it's vital to understand in this study that uh, it's not just understanding gifts for gifts sake, but we're finding purpose. And purpose is a spiritual pursuit. It's by the same spirit. Uh, at the close of our workshop, Lucas and I had talked about how we were gonna end it, and one of the things that we decided was it was gonna be a spiritual moment, and a, a, like a commissioning at the close of our workshop, because we wanna lay hands on folks and just pray, like the Bible says, uh, to uh, inaugurate or to acknowledge uh, those giftings. And Acts, uh, interestingly, when Jesus is uh, coming out of the death barrel and the resurrection, and it's before his ascension, in Acts chapter 1, it says on one occasion he was eating with them and he gave them this command, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And then you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the end of the earth. Let me tell you something, guys. The pursuit of purpose is a spiritual endeavor. And you can't, you can't bypass a moment in the Holy Spirit and find your purpose, your true purpose. It's going to come through the Spirit. And Jesus said, after you receive the baptism of the Spirit, then you're going to be my witness. And when you are endued with power from on high, when there is a spiritual thing happening inside of you that makes you aware of God's purpose, then you're ready to be the witness and live out the purpose that you have. Your witness, your purpose is not fully discoverable without the power and direction of the Spirit. And that's my point today as we're talking about the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. You cannot fully discover what it is God's doing with, with you until you're in that place in the Spirit uh, and the Spirit informs it, right? And purpose, y'all, is less about career and more about calling, right? It's less about career, like what do I do for a job? Because look, uh, even the Apostle Paul was a tent maker for a minute. Aquila and Priscilla were tent makers. Barnabas was a businessman. We don't know exactly what he did. But all of these men had dual functions going on and a way to survive. Peter was a fisherman. That business evidently continued under his mom's tutelage. 
Uh, so, you know, purpose is less about career. And, and a lot of times people get mixed up in this. And it's great if you can align your, what you do nine to five on Monday through Friday and what you get a check for, uh, when you can align it with your purpose, that's wonderful. But it doesn't always work out that way. And if that's your pursuit, sometimes that can become frustratingly uh, undoable. <laughs> Uh, so you got you you got to look at it as a bigger deal than that. It's more about calling than it is about career. It's less about what you do for work and more about who you do it for. Purpose is about the people in your life. It's who we are called to reach and to bless. It's how we are called to reach and bless them. So what the spirit? What is the spirit calling you to become? What is the spirit calling you to do? Who is it that the spirit is calling you to reach? This week we had a session on, uh, or I'm sorry, a couple weeks ago we were having a session on uh, this whole topic of uh, small church and making church smaller, micro church they call it. And we were making commitments to one another about what we would do in the coming week based upon some of the things that we had been studying. And I was reminded of this phrase, walk across the room. Walk across the room. And the Lord just convicted me in that moment to commit again to being ready to walk across the room. Like when I feel something in my spirit, like a curiosity about somebody or the desire to greet someone, uh, then I'm just going to obey and listen to the voice of the spirit just to walk across the room and strike up a conversation. So after I made that commitment, I had a, a little situation happen at a coffee shop recently. And, and I just had this sense, you know, about someone and so I just walk across the room and I said hey I like your fit that's a cool way that old people really don't know but I did use it first time somebody said that to me he said I like your fit I'm like what I, I don't understand what you're talking about dude anyway I like your fit anyway she was like uh, we, so it opened up a conversation and she ended up being an interior designer and we had this she just moved here from St. Louis and there was like a real Great conversation. We were going to go see some of those houses uh, for for the uh, what was it the uh, architectural Andrew AIA whatever AIA stands for the home show. We went with those guys, and so we got to talking about all that kind of stuff, and it just opened up, and also you know ended up in a spiritual conversation. Uh, not that that's where I was going to go, and I never introduced myself as a preacher because people start behaving themselves too quickly. So, you know, but we had a great conversation. Just walk across the room. What is that? That's like listening to the voice of the Spirit to uh, just follow what God is doing in the lives of people. Walk across the room. You're designed to walk across some room. Everybody in here is designed to walk across some room, to be a voice in some conversations at work, uh, in your family to make the gospel to make gospel investments and gospel investments isn't carrying a big bible around and telling everybody what to do with their lives it's it's kindness it is uh, the way of god to love people right to be the voice in some conversation to make gospel investments in a particular way when you follow god's voice when you follow the spirit to walk across the room there are people that are going to be brought closer to god because you obeyed and, and i saw this in uh, in the scripture, and I want, if you have a Bible, you can turn to Acts chapter 11. I'm gonna read the whole chapter. This is like a no-no in speaking terms. If one of my staffers did this, I'd be talking to him on Monday. But the whole chapter, <laughs> Acts chapter 11, I just watched as, as this whole thing about the gifting and the spirit mix to make functions happen in God's economy. So we're going to read through this, Acts 11. The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. All right, that's a, a loaded sentence. You know that Christianity started among the Jews and they thought it was going to stay among the Jews, but then the Gentiles started hearing the word. And this plays off of Acts chapter 10 where Peter had gone to Cornelius' house who was a Roman centurion a soldier and all that house had adopted christianity and now he was having to answer for himself so acts chapter 11 he's back in jerusalem and he's answering for what happened to him while he was in caesarea uh, to the uh, uh, the other believers that were in jerusalem so when peter went up to jerusalem 
the circumcised or the Jews, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Now, I love this phrase because, uh, because when we go meet with someone and eat with them, that's ministry, y'all. That's where all the New Testament ministry happened, was in homes, around tables, and with eating. And, and so he's criticizing in a sort of way it should flip the script and tell us and inform us how we should be behaving ourselves. You know, sometimes people feel like they're going to insulate themselves from the world and they're going to go uh, protect themselves from all the outside influences. Well, that's a posture that says somehow I'm going to be negatively affected. My family's going to be neg negatively affected when I mix it up with people that don't know God. But really the way that ought to be postured is that we uh, that we go into the world and know that if we influence uh, and we're going to be there, there's going to be a positive influence that happens, right? We're not afraid of a negative influence. We know that if we end up in a place, it's going to be a positive influence. But he was criticized, criticized because he ate with people who didn't believe like them. Sort, uh, starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa, which is on the west, uh, uh, or the, yeah, the west coast up against the sea uh, in the Mediterranean in the Middle East there. Joppa, and I was praying, and in a trance, I saw a vision. Now, I want you to see now, beginning, this new thing that's happening is happening as, it starts as a spiritual thing. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from the heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was, and I looked into it, and I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, birds, and I heard a voice. I, I underlined that in my in my reading, I heard a voice, right? So he's having a vision, and he heard a voice. Get up, Peter, kill and eat. And I replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth because Jews don't eat these kinds of things, right? And the voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then that whole thing was pulled up into the heaven again. And right then, he woke up from the trance. Three men had been sent to me from Caesarea, which is just a little south of Joppa, maybe a day's walk. And they stopped at the house where I was staying. And verse 12 says, the spirit told me to have no hesitation. So you, you had a trance, you've got a voice speaking in the midst of this vision, and now the spirit is speaking in his spirit and saying, don't have reluctance about these guys that are standing at your door. He had a little reluctance because he said, Six brothers also went with me. <laughs> he was a chicken. He said, I'm not going down there by myself. I'm not going to face a bunch of criticism. I'm taking some witnesses. So, and we entered the man's house. Once again, where does ministry happen? And he told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house. All right, so while Peter's having a trance, uh, this, this Roman centurion is also having a vision and saw an angel in his house and said, send men to Joppa for Simon, is, who is called Peter, and he will bring you a message through which you and your house will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as it did on us at the beginning. It's a reference to Acts chapter two when the Spirit was poured out. He said, same experience. I was just talking. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't planning on uh, giving the gospel to the Gentiles because I was really suspect about that. But I was just talking. And all of a sudden, the Spirit came on them. I, what was I supposed to do? Then I remembered that the Lord said, John baptized with water. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So... If God gave them the same gift, the same spirit that he gave us who believed on the Lord Jesus, who was I that I could stand in God's way? And when they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God saying, so then, even the Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. Verse 19, and those who had been scattered by the persecution broke out when Stephen was killed and traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch spreading the word among the Jews. What happened here? Stephen got stoned, but the problem was that the Jews were getting upset with these people that were adopting uh, Christ, Jesus, uh, because they were creating drama with the Roman government 
and the Roman government was cracking down on the Jews because they said, well, you know, you guys should know what's happening in your realm here, and there's this group, and they're like, oh, no, they're not Jews. They're not good Jews. They're hypocrites. They're, uh, they're uh, people that are, don't represent us, right? And so the Jews started cracking down on the Jesus followers, and they scattered, and they went up into Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch. Now, the further you go in, in Palestine in Jesus' day, the more you're getting into Greek influence because of the, the merchant roads that went there. And a lot of the Jews uh, didn't just speak Hebrew, but they spoke Greek because it was necessary for business because people were traveling through that region. The Greeks had been there before the Romans, and so that was kind of the language of business. And so they often called them Hellenists. They called them Greeks. Uh, you know, they were like not really good Jews, right? So up in that region, you have people that can't get down to Jerusalem to worship. They're just not being the kind of Jews they need to be, according to the people in Jerusalem. And so the, they're up there speaking to these, some of these uh, people had come out, some of the believers of Christ came out of Jerusalem, went up to these areas where there was more business traffic. It's a wealthier place. And some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, they go ahead and point these cities out because they're clearly not Jewish places, went to Antioch, which was a city that had a big mixture, and began to speak to the Greeks also. Again, the Greeks, they called them, not because they weren't Jewish, but because they spoke Greek and had mixed with the society, telling them the good news about Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of them believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. If you know anything about Barnabas, he was also reared in these areas, and they trusted him as a devout Jew, and they said, he can go up there. We believe in him. He'll give us the scoop. And when he arrived and saw the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord in all their hearts. And he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit, y'all, full of the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit. I wonder how often we are full of the Holy Spirit and how, many, how much of the time we're just full of ourselves and we're full of our flesh and we're full of all the things that are happening in the world and our mind is clouded with everything but what is God's agenda. But this man was full of the Spirit. We need to be full of the Spirit, y'all. We need to understand what it's like to walk and hear the voice of God in our hearts. This man was full of the Spirit and faith. And a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus even further to look for Saul. That's a whole nother story. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught them in great numbers. And the disciples were called Christians there for the first time. And during this time, some prophets, everybody say some prophets. So in other words, somebody can have the gift of prophecy among us. So many of us can have it. But some have such a pronounced uh, use of it, that they become known as prophets, right? So some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. And notice they said, come down. Well, it's north, and we would say, you go north, you're going up, right? But they say, come down, because Jerusalem's on a hill. Anyway, small detail. Sorry to bore you. One of them named Agabus stood up, and through the Spirit, through the Spirit, through the Spirit, y'all, through the Spirit, Nothing's happening really in your purpose unless it's happening through the Spirit. Predicted that a severe famine would spread through the entire uh, Roman world. And this happened during the reign of Claudius. And the disciples, each one of them was able, that was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea around Jerusalem. And they did this, sending their gift to the elders Barnabas and Saul. So you and I are designed for a purpose and that purpose is fueled by the spirit that is in us. But Julie and I feel a particular calling to our Lionheart parents. We have 130-some children in our child care center here. We do this as a ministry to our community. It's not just a, a money-making endeavor. It's, it's too much work. <laughs> to, you could do a lot of easier things. But we do it as a ministry to our community. And Julie and I, my wife and I, we feel, which I'm, I'm married. Did I tell you that from last week? You guys want to hear that story again? I just, I don't know. Anyway, you had to listen last week. It's a funny story. I'm not telling it today. But there's just so many people that we care about and have come to know and become part of their lives and their families. Even if they don't come to church here, it, 
uh, we feel a call to bless and to love on their kids and their families. There are many marriages that we've, uh, you know, helped patch up. There's just lots of wonderful people we've met. And that all of that is a part of who we are and a part of our calling. We sense that we belong in that ministry, that it's not, uh, it, it's just something we need to keep our eyes on. We need to say yes to. Jesus, when he stood up, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and the spirit of the Lord is on us because he knew why. He knew some things about why the spirit was on him. He has anointed me or designated me to proclaim good news, right? So you've been designated. The word of wisdom and the word of knowledge is something that that happens. Uh, so I was having a conversation with one of these Lionheart parents, and I hadn't seen them together because one's dropping off, you know, the other one's picking up, but they were together because their kid was having a little review with one of the teachers. And so they were together. I'm like, oh, you guys are together. I never get to see you together. How you doing? And I started talking to them and visiting a little bit. And uh, the, the lady, uh, the mom in this couple, she had lost her dad about a year and a half ago in a very tragic, sudden thing. The guy was in his 50s, should not have died. It was just a terrible accident. Don't have time to tell it, but, uh, she, but he had passed. And I said, oh, you know, I was just thinking it's, I've never had a chance while you guys are together to really express how awful it must be, especially when we're coming into the holiday seasons, you know, to have lost your dad and that he was such an important aspect and factor in your life. And man, I just feel that. And I said, you know, I, I lost my mom uh, suddenly in a car accident. And I said, uh, you know, at the time we were uh, just racing through the funeral process and everything. But I said, about a year and a half later, I was, uh, I was, in a, I was driving down the road on my birthday. And I thought to myself, you know, normally on my birthday, my mom would call me. And it was one of those kind of calls like, mom, I'm not 12 anymore. You know, <laughs> she would just like, you know, do the mom thing and you're like like I don't need this mom you know but she would call you anyway right and it's your birthday and she didn't make over you or whatever but I'm driving down the road on my birthday and I thought my mom's not going to call me today and all of a sudden I saw I was just flooded with emotion and grief and I pulled over on the side of the road and I said I just cried I couldn't drive I just had to stop and cry and while I was telling that story to this couple, I saw the husband kind of look at me all of a sudden like, and I thought, oh, I, it's too soon. I've stepped in something. I don't know what. I messed up. And I finished the story, but I felt a little awkward, like maybe I'd gone somewhere I shouldn't have gone, you know. And then later on that day, uh, well, the next day he came back and he said, hey, he said, you couldn't have known, but yesterday was my wife's birthday. And she was really wrecked over her dad. Now, I didn't feel in the spirit anything that was like, give this word. But I'm just saying that God, if you're so fluid, right, in our walk with God, if we're just aware, then things that are coming out of our mouths and the things that we're speaking actually have the hand of God working in them to minister to people in ways we don't even know. We're God's children, y'all. We're full of his spirit. We speak the things that God has in our hearts to speak, things we couldn't have known and all of that. So that's the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Jesus said this, my sheep know my voice. I want, we're gonna play a video in just a moment. I'm gonna ask our, our musicians to come back. My sheep know my voice, he said. My sheep know my voice. I know them and they follow me. Jesus said, I only speak what the Father gives me, right? So I think that we should be more aware in our everyday life that we have the voice of God speaking to us. And some of those nudgings and some of those quiet things that you think in your head are actually the Lord working for you to speak. And you don't know what he's been planning in someone's life that your words then become an orchestration of a whole thing that he's doing for someone and in someone's life. I'm gonna play this clip because uh, it represents how God is working sometimes already. And if, if you can just meet with what God is doing, I'm not sure who led this man finally to Christ, but know that God was working before someone ever talked to him. I want you to hear this.
see what's happening in somebody's life long before you ever get there. God is at work. God is at work all around us. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss just one uh, exchange with a child that can matter. Or a stranger. Nate's here today, Nate McClintock, and he and Don are going through it with her cancer. Been a trying week. Cruise down to MD Anderson for the innumerable times again this week. And the pressure is on her, certainly, sick, and then on him as a caregiver, right? Also. He said he was out walking the other day, and uh, his habit is he walks by the school. And he just happened to look up at the time we was turning the corner and feeling a lot of the pressures of this whole challenge that they're in. And he said, on the school sign, it just said, believe. And he said, just like, wow, God, it's almost like a message for me as I'm walking around the corner to say, believe. And then he said, I walked a little further and a young lady was walking across the the field had a backpack on obviously on the way to school and uh, she just kind of shouted it was like 25 to 50 feet away she just kind of shouted to him hey do you know that Jesus loves you so random he said but like right after the sign I walk around the corner and some and this girl just randomly says this to me he said you know I do I wonder what's going on in, in, in our hearts today, what God is doing in your heart, what God is speaking about your direction, about your gifting, about what's next for you, about your children. What voice? My sheep know my voice. I know my sheep and my sheep know my voice. Lord, just wash us. Let's just bow our hearts right now as our singers are coming forward. Lord, just wash us of so much of the stuff that clouds us from the Spirit and the voice of the Spirit. Forgive us, Lord, for our missteps and our sins and our choices that we make that really don't glorify you, God. And let us just kind of clear that stuff away, Lord. And I want to turn our face to you today, God, and say, Lord, I want to acknowledge your voice in my life. These aren't just little nudgings. These aren't just little uh, uh, circumstantial things. This isn't serendipitous. This is the Spirit of God working in us and through us to give us direction. And so that is in the house today. Our prayer partners are coming. Let's stand together and sing this song together.